and gentlemen, listen up. From the Hand Center Studios on 105.9 FM, the zone. Get ready for Supercharged Sports Talk. The John Wiener Show. It's the John Wiener Show with Jackson Meadows live on a Thursday night here at ESPN 105.9 The Zone. Who was the story, though? I, I think more than ever. Number 48. No, oh. it's Nick Saban. I mean, yeah, 48 made a story, <laughs> and we're talking about Tua, but it's all about Nick. Jalen Hurts was 25-2. and two. That's correct, yeah. And the freshman had had not played a lick. No. And you're in the national title game? So I know we're talking about Tua, but it doesn't happen unless Saban has the stones to make that call in the first place. Like, like there's only a few coaches who would even have the audacity and, and the credibility stored up to make that call. I think that magic is inextricable from this. If he's not there, I don't think LeBron is in L.A. I agree. Is that fair to say? 100%. Like, can, can we go that far? I, I, that, especially you when you look, that. and I was hearing Wojciechowski talk about this last night, especially from the situation LeBron is coming from, where Dan Gilbert's a train wreck. Right. An absolute mess. And LeBron had no confidence and faith in his owner to attract anybody or to sort of give him the backing and the faith and the support. LeBron and Dan Gilbert could not have been more at odds. And LeBron and Magic align in every way. Well, I'm going to go with frustrating because this felt like a week where you looked at the field. Yeah. You know how we talked about last week that all of the tournaments Tiger's entering that he's trying to win, it's Torrey Pines, it's Bay Hill, it's Memorial, it's the Majors, it's the toughest tournaments, the toughest courses, and the toughest field. This was not that. This was the quick and loans, the only reason he was in the tournament because it's his tournament. Um, You had, I mean, he was playing with Bronson friggin' Burgoon. Bronson Burgoon. It sounds like a, a failed restaurant Tiger yeah. tried to start in Tampa, right? As egregious of a call as it was. Because it couldn't have been any worse. And it couldn't have been any more blatant. And yeah, probably the Saints likely win the game if that call is made. But I'm just never one of these people to come on the next day and talk about one call and one play in a football game. Especially where the Saints had every single chance to win it, and they didn't. I woke up on Monday... And I wasn't thinking about the call. I wasn't thinking about the pass interference. I I, I was thinking of the two 10-plus point leads that you blew. I was thinking of the worst three-play sequence I think Sean Payton's ever called in his career. I I mean, if, if if they take three knees, the game's over. This is so much fun talking World Cup, man. Because he mentioned Mbappe for France. Great. That, to me, was... There's been a lot of defining moments of this World Cup, but there's nothing quite like in sports when you see a star become one before your eyes. There's nothing in sports like that moment when you when you see it and it's obvious, right? Yeah, it's obvious. Like everyone's heard about this guy, and then he gets on a stage like this and does that, and you say, "Okay, I I will never forget this moment and this guy." And it was Mbappe, the run that he had, not even the two goals that he scored, the run that he had um, to go from one end of the field to the other. He's 19 years old, and he's that good. He scored two goals. He's the first guy to do that in the World Cup since who? Pele. Vince McMahon looking for more, yeah. bringing the XFL back. I think this is ill-fated, man. Oh, man. I don't think this works in any way. I think this is ego. I think this is ambition. I think this is hurt and pride from it not working the first time. I don't think this works. And I don't – I've thought about this a little bit. I haven't gone into the XFL stuff as much as some, but I, I can – I'm not just, like, writing it off because it's Vince McMahon and the XFL. Like, Vince McMahon is one of the great businessmen, the great creators, the most powerful oh. people in our country in my lifetime. You know what I mean? When you just look at what McMahon has done. But still, this right here, the XFL 2.0, is ill-fated. There was more – put it this way – There was more reason for it to work the first time. Real quick to close for not everybody who, to just background this conversation a little bit. 
when the Patriots have been their their record in the playoffs is just absurd. It's the highest winning percentage in the playoffs in the modern era. What the Patriots have done under Belichick and Brady, but what they don't always have an answer for is just big, angry, dominant defensive linemen who can get pressure with four or five and then drop enough guys back to still defend the pass. When the Giants had Strahan and Human Yura and Justin Tuck and JPP, I mean, they were able to get pressure with just four guys. They dropped everybody back and they won two Super Bowls doing it. That's the blueprint. So that's why people look at not just, yeah, he's, for our purposes, it's convenient to talk about Fletcher Cox, but he is a big time, big time uh, focal point for both teams in this game. There's no doubt about it. Weekly word coming up, John Wiener Show.